We're going to have everybody take their seats, please. Everybody take their seats so we can see if we need any additional seating. Before we begin, we have a uh, set of keys that were found out on the table out front. Also, we have a car with its lights on. I don't know what type of car, but the number is 736H. If that's your car, your lights are on. 736H. And it looks like a set of car keys. Maybe for that car. Can we have everybody seated, please? Gentlemen, find a seat. No seat. Coach Smith, we need some seats. On behalf of Mark Smith, I'd like to welcome you all to the annual M Club, the Phelan Awards Banquet. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to recognize some special guests that we have in the audience. First, from the Medford School Committee, we have members Jack Buckley, Bob Scary, and Lena DiPantomasso. I'd like to thank them for their support. Also this year, we're very fortunate Due to the generosity of the Mustang Club, we will be presenting letter plaques to all seniors who have won letters in their uh, career as a Mustang. This is the first time we've been able to give out a letter, an actual letter, to the students, and we're very fortunate. We owe a great debt of gratitude to the Mustang Club, and some of the members that are here tonight are Joe Fortunato, George Therott, Craig Fallon, Carlson Cotty, Frank Polari, Guy Monterana, Larry Murphy, Marty Murphy, and Peter Davis. We give them a round of applause, please. Thank you. We also, it wouldn't be an M Club banquet without recognizing a very special, a longtime supporter of Medford High School athletics and as coaches and as players. That's Mr. Tony Lucci from Medford Square Sporting Goods. Also, we have two members from the, the Medford Press who have been very kind to us in the Medford sporting community. Uh, Keith Lewis from the Medford Transcript and Dave O'Connor from the Medford Mercury. Now tonight, tonight uh, because we have uh, numerous presentations to make and we also have 80 letter plaques to give out, we will be giving out the letter plaques during the meal while you're reading. So we'd appreciate your cooperation uh, during the meal to speed things up. At this time, I'd like to call on the, uh, the Dean of Medford Coaches, the 
Silver Fox himself to uh, lead us in a blessing. Uh, Coach Ernie Adelino from the girls basketball. Now, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, bless us, O Lord, to leave thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Have a nice night. seniors who are receiving one letter and one sport. First off, for football, Steve Bottolini. For basketball, Jen Caponito. For golf, Ryan Christensen. For soccer, Jonathan Deedy. For lacrosse, Nick Durgan. For hockey, Todd Durham. For basketball, Amy Galasso. For football, Nick Giannino. For hockey, Dan Jaleo. For basketball, Paul Grandy. For hockey, John Guerrero. For basketball, Evan Mealy. For hockey, Chuck Miranda. Basketball, Jerry Arganowski. For lacrosse, David Pastore. For soccer, Rachel Potts. For lacrosse, Mike Quigley. For football, Rich Russell. Also for football, Eddie Tyrants. Now we have two letters in one sport. For basketball, Jermaine Cannon. For lacrosse, David Canaseso. For baseball, Rich Conti. For swimming, Rachel Devaney. For football, Frank D. Giovanni. For lacrosse, Bobby Marchese. For soccer, David Pinkos. For volleyball, Colleen Ray.
for volleyball, Veronica Travaglioni. These athletes receiving two letters in two sports. For football and lacrosse, John Camuso. For indoor track and outdoor track, Paulette Doily. In baseball, Josh Glyona. For hockey, Paul Doyen. For tennis, Johnson F. For cheering, Beth Lutkovic. <laughs> For swimming, Lisa Masowitz. Swimming, Lisa Masowitz. For hockey, Chris Maniatis. For cheering, Kerry Moralia. For soccer, Karen Morey. Cheering, Melanie Newell. For lacrosse, Sean Ryan. And for tennis, Matt Seifert. Okay, the following athletes are receiving three letters in two sports. For a softball and basketball, Suzanne Bottolini. For football and outdoor track, Anthony Champoli. Tennis, Mike Granara. For hockey and soccer, Mike Bono. <laughs> Following athletes are receiving four letters in one sport. For swimming, Patrice Jewett. Swimming, Jeff Nataro. For hockey, Anthony Sano. Don't choke. Falling athletes 
athletes are receiving four letters in two different sports. For football and baseball, Bob Baldessari. For cheering and gymnastics, Andrea Champaglia. Baseball and indoor track, Bobby Howe. For softball and volleyball, Lisa Riccioni. For tennis and volleyball, Katie Rogers. and soccer, Josh Shrepnik. For cheering and gymnastics, Debbie Vinci. The following athletes are receiving full letters in three different sports. For soccer, indoor track, and lacrosse, Cody Monell. For volleyball, indoor track, and outdoor track, Jen O'Neill. The following athletes are receiving five letters in two different sports. For football and lacrosse, Chuck Campobasso. For basketball and golf, Justin Laverme. Following athlete is receiving six letters in three different sports. For cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track, David Sizula. <laughs> receiving seven letters in two different sports. For softball and basketball, Linda Shula. Receiving seven letters in three different sports for cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track, Kristen Abbott. <laughs> Receiving seven letters in four different sports for soccer, swimming, softball, and gymnastics, Mary Jane Puccio. Receiving, following athletes are receiving eight letters in three different sports. For tennis, soccer, and indoor track, Brian Benedict. track and outdoor track, Sandy Cho. For tennis, soccer and swimming, Lauren Maggio. receiving eight letters in three different sports for soccer, tennis, and swimming, Andrea Tringali. <laughs> also 
also eight letters in three different sports for swimming, soccer, and softball, Katie Yeager. Receiving nine letters in three different sports. That's nine letters in three different sports for soccer, basketball, and tennis. Kristen Sullivan. Receiving nine letters in four different sports for baseball, cross country, basketball, and indoor track, Pat Toomey. Receiving 10 letters in three different sports for cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track, Jen Sullivan. <laughs> Receiving 11 letters in three different sports for golf, hockey, and baseball, Joe Roy. receiving 12 letters in three different sports for cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track, Nikki Russell. Can I see a flash? Once again, once again, on behalf of uh, the M Club, on behalf of Mark Smith and myself, for those of you who haven't seen these, this is what the letter, the letter plaques look like. We felt this would be a much more appropriate uh, keepsake for our athletes rather than giving them a letter and, you know, some of them, I, I know my son has one that's still sitting on his bureau gathering dust. Some people, ha I know, have letter sweaters that are up in the attic somewhere. This is a nice plaque that they'll be able to keep, you know, hopefully put on an office wall or a, a dormitory room wall. And again, we'd like to thank the Mustang Club for their generosity in allowing us to provide these to our senior athletes. At this time, I'd like to call on the president of the Mustang Club, Mr. George Theron. And a thank you to Joe Valletta for the excellent job he did on the plaques themselves. The opportunity to do this is something that the Mustang Club has been wanting to do. And finally, with enough participation and support, we were able to do it this year. We hope to be able to do it every single year that this M Club will be in existence. And uh, I just want to say that there are four students here tonight that next week at the Mustang Club banquet are receiving awards totaling $500 to be used for their college education. I think a round of applause now for Katie Yeager, Brian Benedict, Linda Shula, and uh, one more. Oh, Robbie Baldessari, how could I forget you? Congratulations, guys, to all of you. Well done. Thank you. Okay, we will present, we will, uh, Take a short break and we'll come back and present the Unsung Hero Awards right after we finish eating. Thank you. Before we get started introducing the Varsity Coaches for their Unsung Hero Awards. There are a couple of other people we need to mention. Two more members of the school committee that we 
inadvertently left off a few minutes ago, Beth Bulla and Paulette Van de Kloot are with us tonight. We also would like to thank, this is, this is the sixth year that myself and Mr. Manitol have been in charge of the M Club. And for all six years, we have asked Mr. Bill Carr about getting the Irish American. And for six years in a row, the Irish American Club has generously donated this hall to the M Club for this night. And on behalf of the M Club, I'd like to thank the Irish American and Mr. Bill Carr. The meal again tonight was excellent, and again, each year we go to Marty's Caterers, and Marty Murphy has provided a great deal for us, and has provided the meal. Marty Murphy, thank you. Also, this program that you have in front of you tonight, the people who bought advertisements in it was a great contribution to the night. Also. Mr. Bill McGeary in the Medford Vocational Print Shop, which printed the book for us and did another great job. I want to thank them. We also have a young lady with us tonight who is a senior at Medford High School. She was the editor of the yearbook, and she spent an awful lot of time on the computer. She printed all 36 pages of this. She put an awful lot of time during her lunch period, after school, and this book wouldn't have got done without Jennifer Allen. Jennifer, stand up, please. Before we call on the coaches to present the Unsung Heroes, these Unsung Hero Awards have been a tradition at Medford High School, and they were cut out of the budget many years ago, and we had a couple of people who stepped forward, and ever since I've been around, have been counted on to provide us with the unsung heroes. And again this year, Mr. Joseph Brandy, Mr. Bill Carr, and Mr. Joe Balletta have provided the unsung hero awards for tonight. <laughs> the boys tennis, the lacrosse, and baseball are going to hold on to their unsung hero awards till the end of their seasons, but the rest of them will be presented tonight. First up, basketball coach Tom Reiser. This year's Unsung Hero Award for Basketball goes to John Chiesa. Mr. Ernie Adelino. Thank you. This year's Unsung Hero Award for the girls' basketball team goes to a young lady who has played for two years, played a little bit of JV and varsity in her sophomore year, and this year had an outstanding year. And I remember one game where she got a little rough under the boards. The next thing I saw with tears coming out of her eyes, but she's a tough kid, a good kid, and I select Captain Elect for next year, Megan Toomey. <laughs> Cheerleading coach, Cheryl Passanato. goes to Kim Conlon. 
<laughs> and Andrea Chimpalia. I was just joking, Andrea. <laughs> Kim Conlon, Andrea Chimpalia. award goes to Meredith Lee, and I don't think Meredith is with us tonight, but I will make sure she gets the trophy. Thank you. Football coach Bill Baldini. Unsung hero goes to a kid who's been a starter for two years and he's going to be a starter again this year. He's one of the toughest players I've ever had as a, as a coach and uh, we're looking for big things out of him. Uh, was our most best defensive lineman last year. This year, unsung hero goes to Andre Straker. Golf uh, Unsung Hero Trophy goes to uh, senior Billy LaMonica. I have a bet with Joe Grandy that this will be done in less than two minutes. Uh, our candidate, our award winner for uh, Unsung Hero uh, Hockey Squad this year, is a young man who I've had the pleasure of, of coaching two of his brothers and, and now this young man. And he epitomizes to me what high school athletics are all about. Was always there, always on time for practice, did whatever he asked for him to do, whether it was, you know, kill penalties, be a four checker, make the better players work a little bit harder, and never complain. And I'm delighted to present the Unsung Hero Award to Josh Clayona.
here. We have a bunch of newcomers to come along. We made our track season very exciting. Uh, probably one of the most exciting track seasons we've had in many years here in Metro. The first one goes to a newcomer, one of the best runners in the league, Brian Benedict. Next one goes to another senior who came along and wanted to try something. Came up to be one of the better hurdlers in the league, other than Cody Marino. because she is like a student coach. She does all the girls to do what she says to do. All the girls will try to emulate her. And I'm going to miss her. She's been around for four years. And, and she never waited from the day she came to Mendon High School. She's my unsung hero and the track team's unsung hero, none other than Nikki Russell. Unsung hero for the boys soccer team this year are two. One is Brian Benedict, who will be attending Merrimack College in the fall. The other is Dave Pinkos, who will attend a Lowell University. This year, 
here at Medford High School, we had a new girls soccer coach, and all she did in the first season was lead them to the state tournament, Miss Eva Lang. It's my pleasure to give this award, the Unsung Hero Award, to Anna Angelari, who is hardworking, dedicated, and very committed to the team. Um, and I'm looking forward to having her next year, but unfortunately she was unable to, to attend tonight. She will receive this later on. Thank you. Softball coach, Mr. Harry Marchetti. This year's winner for softball is Lisa Reggioni. Swim coach is Mary Judge. and excitement throughout the year. That means all of you. I am proud to, be, to see the accomplishments and I hope the future classes will follow in your footsteps. Now, the Unsung Hero Award is given to those who go above and beyond with what is asked of them with no questions asked. These three athletes have done just about anything I've asked them to do. Uh, if I just tell them, you know, you've got to go swim this today, they just go and swim. They don't ask any questions. And um, I'm really proud to say that these three people have been with me all four years. They're um, National Honor Society people and they're the 20, in their top 20 percentile of the class. And I'm happy to, to announce the Unsung Hero Awards for Swimming are presented to Co-Captain Patrice Jewett, Co-Captain Rachel Devaney, and Senior Justin Tower. present this year's Unsung Hero Award for Tennis to our co-captain, Lauren Maggio. volleyball team was in its second season and showing lots of promise. We had two GBL All-Stars. One was named to the second All-Star team, Lisa Regioni. We had one named to the first GBL All-Star team, Jeanette Cerullo. Katie Rogers, our co-captain, received the Sportsmanship Award, and our most valuable player for the season was Jeanette Cerullo. This year's Unsung Hero is a two-year player with an awesome serve. I am happy to present this award to Lisa Regione.
A girls cross country uh, award goes to a junior who will be our captain next year, one of our captains next year, uh, Brianna Lungo. goes to a player that best epitomized Larry Zarella through his diligent work and leadership abilities on and off the field. And this year's player definitely is that. He's a hard worker, relentless worker in the weight room. He's upcoming senior this year. He's a two-year star, two starter for us. He's a linebacker, one of the team leaders in tackles. He's a two-year starter on special teams also for us. He was one of 16 sophomores to start two years ago. Uh, and he's going to be a starter again this year. 
He's also a two-sport player. He plays a little lacrosse team, and he's a two-year two player on that, on a starter for lacrosse. He made a ton of big plays for us for a junior, and he's looking, we're looking for big things from him this year. Number 88, Mike Vecchia. <laughs> Cheerleading coach, Ms. Cheryl Passanato. The Patricia Marie Grandy Memorial Award was established by the Grandy family in memory of their daughter, Patricia M. Grandy, a Medford High School graduate. This award is presented annually to a senior varsity cheerleader who exemplifies determination, skill, dedication, and team spirit. This award will be presented to the cheerleader who has been able to give her team 100% during game or competition. It also comes with a $300 scholarship. The cheerleader that wins this year, um, even though it says here they have to give 100% during game or competition, unfortunately she wasn't able to compete with us in the fall because of a broken elbow, but she was always there. She was the captain of her team. She still did her job, and she's a great all-around kid. I can only say that I hope that my daughters grow up to be just like her. It would be an honor, and her mom should be very proud of her. Debbie Vinci. Presenting the Mark Comfort Memorial Scholarship, our head track coach, Mr. Steve Maskell. The Mark Comfort Memorial Scholarship Award is dedicated in the memory of a great runner which we had here in Medford, when Mark Comfort, he was one of the best runners we've ever had, and he died, and this award is given to a runner which shows the same dedication and ability, as well as the craziness and spirit of competition as Mark was. Now this year, as I told you, we had a, an exceptional season. Uh, the most exceptional day was the day when we were in the Tom Duffy Fieldhouse in Cambridge when this individual beat the state champion and he fired the baton in a crowd and all of a sudden Medford had beaten Cambridge which we've never done before and then we had to run and jump on the bus. And I'm from Cambridge. <laughs> and this individual, he, he is a person who never liked to, to lose. And he was an individual just like Mark was. He has the same fire in his eyes, wherever he plays, whatever he does. And an award also goes along with it of $200 provided by the Track Booster Organization and that person this year is none other than, from West Medford, Patrick Toomey. Next up, we have the Bud Stillman Soccer Award, and that's going to be presented by Mr. Joel Barletta. A 
First, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Matatal and Mr. Smith for an excellent banquet, and also to all the student athletes. The Alan Bud Stillman Award was started in 1979 by a group of alumni who wanted to honor one of the greatest, most successful coaches that came out of Medford High School. He has been in the, Mr. Stillman was a man who instilled basic principles of life in you. He is in the National Soccer Hall of Fame. He passed away a few years ago. We like to keep his memory alive. The young man that was selected by the coaches this year to receive the award, which goes to a person who exemplifies the idea of sportsmanship and dedication and team spirit and that desire to excel. And this young man was one of the top defenders and for the Mustangs this year. I understand he was a very, very serious and dedicated leader. And the winner this year is Cody Monell. It gives me great pleasure to present the Friends of Medford High School Award to a student athlete who has all the characteristics that a coach looks for in a true athlete. This recipient was given the natural ability to be a tremendous role model on and off the field. She is a very gifted three-sport athlete who is just as gifted in the classroom as well as on the field. I personally want to thank this young lady, excuse me, for making my first year at Medford High School a very enjoyable one as well as memorable one. This award goes to Andrea Tringali. time I'd like to uh, represent, I mean, to recognize the members of our M Club Executive Board. These seven individuals were elected by their peers, their student athletes, and I'd like them to all stand up and we can hold our applause as we get to the end. First of all, Aaron Breen, Chuck Campobasso, David DeVoe, Justin Laverm, Nikki Russell, Pat Toomey, and Katie Yeager. Thank you very much. Chuck, Chuck Campobasso, why did Toomey have to sit over there? Oh, okay. <laughs> We're very sensitive about those things. Uh, once again, this year, it, it's, it's an honor and a, and a privilege for me to present the Friends of Angel Torres Award. Uh, we have three members of Angel's family here, his wife, Elaine, his daughter, Ariane, and his son, Angel. And I'd like to ask Ariane and Angel to come up and assist with the presentation, please. Unfortunately, the student athletes that are gathered here tonight, and unfortunately a lot of the coaches who are here uh, never knew Angel Torres. But many of us here in this room were very privileged to have known and to have counted Angel Torres as a friend. Angel was the head basketball coach and assistant track coach and a physical education teacher at Medford High School until he died in 1989. A uh, committee of three of Angel's friends, myself, Mark Smith, and Frank Jewett, meet every year to select the winner of this award. It's an award that uh, 
we work very hard and we make a very careful decision. Because one of the things that uh, Angel embodied in his athletes, first of all, he displayed it himself, and he demanded his athletes always display character, integrity, sportsmanship, and scholarship. If you take a look in your program and you look at the past winners, what we've tried to do is select a team that we knew Angel would be proud to coach. And if you look at, very quickly, if you look at the winners, Ed Carnes, Celine Toomey, Luger Bain, Jonathan Glyona, Chris LeJudice, Chris Jones, and last year's winner, Felice LePay, I think you'll agree with me if you know those students that we've created a real all-star team for Angel. This year we're making an addition. It's time to add another female member to this team. And this year, this year's winner, and this includes a $300 scholarship, is a four-year varsity starter in softball. She's captain this year. Three-year varsity basketball player, was also a captain this year. She's worked on the yearbook committee, student council, SAD, key club, the submasters council, and the math team. I know for a fact she's very good in the math team because she always does her math homework in my health class. <laughs> when she can get there on time. But seriously, she, she embodies the traits we look for. Char character, integrity, sportsmanship, and scholarship. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to present the 1997 Friends of Angel Torres Award and Scholarship to Linda Shula. Next award is the Ken Cooper Memorial Scholarships, and making the presentation will be Mr. Mark Smith. This is the 13th year we're presenting two Ken Cooper Memorial Scholarships Award. And if you look at the past winners, you see an impressive list of former Mustangs who are true student athletes. This year we get to add two more names that fit with the others. Too bad all of you didn't get to play in front of Kenny Cooper. Mr. Cooper loved watching Memphis High School athletes perform. He supported every team and every kid who put on a blue and white uniform. He always had a pat on the back or a word of encouragement for every kid, win, lose, or draw. In his memory, the M Club presents two $100 scholarships to student athletes who have exhibited selflessness, a willingness to put their team ahead of individual performance. These awards must be applied for and we have some faculty members of the high school who read the applications and make the decision. Usually, I introduce the winners separately, but this year's two winners do an awful lot of the same things and are very close, so I want them to come up together and I can read them together. They're linked together in so many activities. They both play three sports. They're both in the top 20 of the senior class. They both belong to National Honor Society, student council, math team, and all these other activities at Method High School. They are both captains, they are teammates, they are friends, and they're two of the finest young ladies I've ever had the pleasure to know. The ple I have the pleasure to give the 1997 Ken Cooper Awards to Andrea Tringali and Kristen Sullivan. Our next presentation is the Golden Mustang Award, making the presentation our athletic director, Mr. Francis Bud Kelly.
like to congratulate Mr. Mattatall and Mr. Smith for the great job they've done. Mention that the parents, probably the most important people here tonight supporting their athletes, as well as the athletes. I'd like to thank everybody for coming here tonight. This award was started in 1992, and if you take a look at the program book, we've had some unbelievable individuals who received these. Stevie Miller, God bless him, Joe Grandy, Tony Lucci, Bill Carr, and Paul McCann. Uh, this award is based upon the recommendation from the students who are the executive board and the advisors, as well as the two advisors themselves. And this award is presented to an individual who goes beyond the call of duty. It's a unique situation. I'm probably the only one in this room who has this opportunity to say this. I started my practice teaching in 1965 at Method High School. I first met this gentleman. And as time evolved, he became a submaster and my boss. And eventually, as the head coach, he sat in his office many a time. I know it's very hard for me to conceal whose identity I'm talking about. This gentleman goes beyond the call of duty. He's at softball games, basketball games, baseball games. There isn't a minor sport in his category. All of the kids get treated alike. He's dedicated to the educational community number one. As far as I'm concerned, he's the best headmaster in the Commonwealth, Mr. Salvatore Tadaro. Thank you. Our next award is the Ray Romano Award. Making the presentation, our head girls basketball coach, Mr. Ernie Adelino. that thing down. This award has been given out for the last 32 years, and I can remember the first night that I gave this award out, it was at a Method High gym at the old gymnasium on, um, what's it, Forest Street, Chevalier Gym. And Billy Young, who was a teacher at Method High, was the first recipient, and a lot of you people know who he is, and he was a football coach, a great person, and really exemplified Ray Romano. Since then, every one of the other 31 have exemplified Ray Romano. This year, we have a gentleman who also exemplifies Ray Romano. Ray was a person who played side by side with me, Sal Tadaro. He was a good friend of Buddy Kelly's. And we played a lot of football together, and I can always remember one game in particular, we were playing over at Somerville, the score was nothing to nothing. And Ray had just come out of the hospital. And he get into this game, he was in the game, and John Delasola, who was the coach at that time, sent him the ball game, and he came out come out onto the field and he says, uh, this is gonna be my last one. He said this to me. Next play, he ran about 35 yards into the end zone for a touchdown. We won the game six to nothing and that was Ray's last game. He went in the hospital the following week. Leukemia took him from us. He died in February of that year. And a real close friend to all of us had passed away and had hurt a lot of people in the pen while doing so. The winner of this year's Ray Romano Award is Joe Resendez. Feely Jr. Memorial Sports Scholarship. Making the presentation, our senior submaster, Mr. David Polcari. Bernie, I'm gonna uh, keep this up a little higher. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it is a privilege for me to come before the student athletes of Medford High School to honor my late friend, John Feely. 
John F. Feely Jr. died in October of 1991 after a courageous battle against cancer. I think everyone who knew John would readily admit he was a likable fellow. He possessed great integrity, a warm and friendly personality, and a great sense of humor. Another part of John was intense and tenacious. He was one tough kid. Whether defending his principles or a friend who needed his help, John showed a fantastic inner strength. This toughness translated very well onto the athletic field at Medford High School, where he played between 1965 and 1967. Whether playing baseball or basketball or his favorite sport, which was football, John always played fair, but he played hard. John's family is extremely tight-knit, and his untimely death left a tremendous void in their lives. As a way of helping to remember and honor John's life, and at the same time help a deserving student athlete, his family, some of whom are here tonight, and I should mention his dad, Jack, his mom, Jerry, his sister, Geraldine, his brother, Charles, and his wife, Kathy, they established the John F. Feely Jr. Memorial Sports Scholarship beginning in the year 1992. This scholarship carries a $500 award. And we have the original uh, recipient of that award here tonight. And some of you have gotten to know him this year because he's returned to Medford High School after graduating at Springfield College. Keith Mangan. <laughs> Kathy and Geraldine at uh, dinner tonight told me that this year was particularly difficult to choose a winner. Um, there were a dozen or more applicants for the scholarship, and it was very, very difficult. This year's winner is a person who is highly regarded. He's a quiet, humble, unassuming individual who works hard in school and receives commendable grades. He has outstanding social and family values, much like John Fairley did. In three years, as his submaster, I've never heard him say anything negative or have anyone say a negative word about him. He's simply a class act. He's currently a member of the baseball team, and next year he'll be attending Suffolk University. Ladies and gentlemen, student athletes, the winner of the sixth annual John F. Feely Memorial Sports Scholarship is Rich Conti. Two Medford High School Coaches Award, presenting the first one to the male recipient, the director of the vocational school, Mr. Lawrence Volpe. Thank you, Mr. Mattertall. The winner of the MHA Coaches Association Award for male goes to a member of the football team, a GBL All-Star who was selected to be in the Harry Aganis All-Star Game. This person also played for two years in the outfield at Medford High School. He's in the top 20% of his class academically, taking very strenuous courses. 
<clears throat> he has a great attitude, he's a great role model. This year's winner is Bob Baldessari. Making the presentation for the female recipient of the Medford High School Coaches Award, our superintendent of schools, Mr. Roy Belson. Thank you, Paul. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate both you and Mark for the outstanding job you and the executive committee of the M Club has done to put together this fine athletic tribute to the athletes of Medford High School. Let me congratulate all the coaches. Let me congratulate the AD. All the players, male and female, for the outstanding seasons you've had and for the contributions you've made to your teammates, to yourselves, and to the image of Medford High School. So many of you have uh, done yourself very proud, both as athletes on the field and as scholars in the classroom, and some colleges out there are going to be very lucky to have you. And the parents who brought you to this point should be very proud of your achievements. The MHS Coaches Award goes to an individual, or a female, who has demonstrated performance, leadership, and the ethic of a true athlete. This individual who we're giving it to this evening is a person who has established herself in three sports. She has been the captain of three sports. Four years in cross country, four years in indoor track, and four years in outdoor track. She is in the top 20% of her class academically, she is a member of the executive board of the M Club. I'm told by her coaches that she is an outstanding leader with outstanding character and all the young people look up to her. She's a person who they say has never missed a practice, never missed a meet. They restyled her as the Cal Ripken of running. And that she is an individual who is also the vice president of the senior class. It gives me great pleasure to present this award to Nikki Russell. I'd just like to add one more thing, and that's simply this, is that you do have the best headmaster in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and maybe the country, Sal Tadaro. The next award is the Harry Smith Award, making the presentation our head boys basketball coach, Mr. Tom Reiser. I can also verify that Nikki was there every single day because uh, we practice every single day and uh, there was a brief moment when the track was running around the outside that uh, my players would stop paying attention to me and I'd always say, what's going on? Look over and Nikki would be running by and that was a major distraction. Now, uh, unlike uh, a lot of the other speakers tonight, I didn't happen to know Mr. Harry Smith or anything about his times, but I do know that it's supposed to go to an athlete displaying personal qualities and, and, and outstanding character. And, and I have a person that uh, played for us that uh, really befits that. And this is a person as a freshman was a five foot nine guard wore a nine and a half sneaker. And as a senior, he's a six foot eight guard wearing a size 13 and a half sneaker. And uh, the, the work ethic and the character and the qualities this young man exhibits uh, truly refreshing in, in this day and age. Uh, as our team captain, our team MVP, the Greater Boston MVP, a Herald and Globe All Scholastic, uh, he's done it all. He went to the Garden and shot free throws a couple of weeks ago in the state free throw shooting championship. He's a scholarship athlete, uh, full scholarship to Stonehill College in the fall. Uh, he comes from great stock. His parents, uh, terrific people, his, his brother, uh, played for us also, and, and his younger sister, uh, Jerrica, I think is going to end up uh, playing in the ladies' NBA. And uh, it's just a tremendous family, and I'm really going to miss dealing with these people. They're all gone now and, and uh, as they move along. But a, a true tribute to Harry Smith, uh, this person of extreme character, uh, 
not only played for me, but I consider him a friend and I consider him a surrogate son, uh, Justin Laverne. Our next award is the Steve Miller Scholarship Award. Making the presentation will be Mr. Mark Smith. It really is an honor to stand up here tonight and talk to you a little bit about Mr. Steve Miller. All these other awards you've been listening and hearing about people from the past. And Four or five years from now, people are going to be sitting here not knowing who Steve Miller was. This year's senior class is the last class that got to go to Mefford High School while Steve Miller was working full-time in Mefford High School. Steve was a unique individual who left Mefford High School. During his 25 years, he was the heart and soul of Mefford High School athletics. He did so many things for so many people, he never realized what he did until we had to do them ourselves. And coaching Mefford High School since he has gone has been so much harder. Steve was a friend of every player on every team. And when something was needed, a knee brace, a new uniform, an extra bus, a pair of shoes, just tell Steve and it got done. No questions asked. He didn't care why, he didn't care who, it got done. Didn't matter if Steve was talking to kids, adults, administrators, he could be talking with the President of the United States, he'd be the same guy, and he'd probably leave them laughing. With us tonight is his family, his sons Joey and Steve, and his wife Rose. This award is given for loyalty. I am not going to mention anything about the winner's record on the field or what he did on the field, because what he did on the field doesn't matter. It's what he did in the locker room, it's what he did on the phone calling people, it's what he did around school. He's a two-sport captain, and he's earned the respect of his teammates and coaches. If something needs to be done, sorting through equipment, cleaning out the old weight room, calling players, walking from his house in North Medford to the weight room every day his sophomore and junior year. Steve Miller's pep talks have become legendary. This kid went to all the games, hockey, basketball, girls basketball, cheering competitions. He led the Mefford High School crowd. Sometimes his actions went a little bit over the line, but they only went over the line because his heart was in the right place. When I started coaching 15 years ago, the first thing I was taught at Mefford High School was loyalty. And Steve Miller had a lot to do with that. And this year's winner, I'm sure Steve is smiling proudly because he's as loyal as Steve was, Chucky Campobasso. he was a baseball player. <laughs> uh, next award is the Lorinda Saragosa Award, making the presentation, our head swimming coach, Mary Judge. The Clorinda Saragosa Award was started in 1993 to honor, honor the outstanding female senior athlete at Medford High. The recipient of this year's Clorinda Saragossa Award is also a three-sport athlete. She imposes physical and mental challenges upon herself to strive to be the very best she can be, whether it's in the athletics or in the classroom. Some of her achievements thus far include, she's been a member of the M Club for all four years, she's been a member of an, the M Club Executive Board, she's a GBL All-Star, 
the co-captain of the swim team, a member of the soccer team and the softball team, president of the ski club, member of the National Honor Society, member of the student council, member of the key club and the yearbook staff. This bright, talented individual possesses good sportsmanship and a sense of accomplishment within academia. She is helpful and considerate of her teammates and classmates as well. She cheers the team in and out of the pool and on the field. She is an excellent example of Mustang pride. In the, in the fall, she will be attending Tufts University. I would like to present the 1997 Clorinda Saragossa Award to Ms. Katie Yeager. Our next award is the William Budd Edgeley Award. And this year, for the first time, it'll be an honor and a privilege for me to make the presentation. First, I'd like to uh, recognize two members of the Edgeley family that are here tonight, Mr. Bill and Mr. Lou Edgeley. <laughs> this award is named after a gentleman, Bud Edgeley, who was probably considered to be one of the greatest all-time Medford High School athlete. He was an all-scholastic in football, baseball, and track. And if you've been up on the field behind the high school, uh, there was a stone marker there commemorating this man's memory. The field is named after him. Uh, hopefully, when the field renovations are complete, uh, we will have a field that we will be proud to have named after this, young, this gentleman. Tonight's winner, certainly fits right in. If you look at the list of past winners, there's an unbelievable list of athletes. Tonight's winner has won nine varsity letters during his career at Medford High School, three years in cross country, one year in basketball, one year in indoor track, thank God, four years in baseball, this year, he's the captain of three sports, cross country, indoor track, and baseball. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank one of my uh, fellow coaches from across the river in Arlington, who fortunately, although he coached in Arlington, had the good sense to live in Medford and allow me to have this young man for four years. I don't know what I'm gonna do without him. It's a great honor and privilege for me to present the William Budd Edgeley Award to Pat to me. Next award, the Helen B. Ellard Scholarship Award, Ms. Clunda Saragosa. I need my specs. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the award winners this evening for the great accomplishments to, and also to the team players who helped you achieve those successes along with their very own. Between good and great is a little extra effort, who are the greatest. Each year I feel so privileged to be present when a trophy is being presented in my honor, and what an even greater honor it is for me to be able to meet the recipient of that award. There are no words to express my thanks, especially to my former student, Harry Marchetti. I am also proud to be asked each year by Mr. Matatal and Mr. Smith to present the winner of the Helen Ellard Award. None of us achieve our success all by ourselves. We can all look back and think of our parents, other family members, friends, church, community, hopefully school, and just maybe a teacher or two who made a difference in our lives. I know Miss Ellard was that kind of teacher to me. She was my teacher at the Roberts and then at Medford High School in the early days of her career. 
as a teacher of health and physical education, her expectations were not only to be the best that you could be on the field, but also in everyday life as well. In those were days, the word tomboy was tacked on to any girl who dared to encroach upon the male-dominated world of sport. So in Ms. Ellard's classes, we were taught to be proud of our skill and at the same time to know how to be a lady. Her words still ring in my ears, know who you are, where you come from, and who you represent. And hats and gloves and teacup skills were all part of the game plan. Skills that came in mighty handy in my many travels playing field hockey and lacrosse, and in more recent years as a citizen ambassador to Russia on health and physical fitness. She helped me to achieve all of my dreams. Probably the greatest of this was to be able to spend the last 28 years of my teaching career here in Medford trying to give back much of what was given to me. The young lady who will be receiving this year's Helen Ellard Award not only measures up to Miss Ellard's expectations, but far beyond her greatest expectations. She's the kind of person who will continue to accomplish and achieve and go on to even greater heights and fulfilling her dreams. She is not only an athlete, but a scholar as well. She's been a varsity soccer player for four years, voted unsung hero, MVP, GBL All-Star captain her junior and senior year. She has played basketball for four years, voted MVP and captain her senior year. She has also been involved as a member of SAD, Ski, and Mustang Clubs, Student Council, Home Room Representative, Prom Committee, Yearbook Staff, and National Honor Society Secretary. Her community service includes volunteer work at St. Raphael's Parish, St. Paul's Soup Kitchen, Boston Museum Sciences Discovery Center, Walks for Hunger and Education, Brooks Estate Cleanup, Med Medford High School Pride Day, uh, clothing drives, toys for tots, and still found time to participate in the World of Difference Team Harmony Conference. It goes on and on. You have to be patient with me because I could not really pick out certain things. I had to tell you everything about her because she's unbelievable. She was twice named Student of the Week, and her awards include three years academic achievement in English and excellence in writing, science achievement awards in honors biology, chemistry, and physics, commendable performance in the national Spanish exam, Xerox award for the highest uh, average in humanities, book awards from Mount Holyoke, Harvard, and Dartmouth, second place in the Voice of Democracy essay contest, and winner of the citizenship award given by the Middlesex County Bar Association. Is it no wonder she is listed in who's who among high school students? You've no doubt heard the old adage, good, better, best, never let it rest until the good becomes better and the better is best. Well, that's what this human dynamo is all about. She has been on the headmaster's list for all four years by achieving highest honors for four years. She is rated number one in the senior class and is this year's valedictorian, and I understand she will be attending Brown University next year. I can't begin to tell you what an honor and privilege it is for me to present to you this year's Helen Ellis Award recipient, Ms. Kristen Ann Sullivan. I'd just like to mention that uh, the Medford Rotary Club also has, makes a $300 donation in the form of a scholarship for this award. And now we come to the final award of the evening, the Richard J. Phelan Award, for which this banquet is named. And making the presentation this evening, our headmaster, Mr. Sal Tadaro. I have to lower it for the little guys. When we talk about the Phelan Award, I guess what we're talking about uh, the quality of an individual, not only as a educator, but as a, an athlete, but not only an ordinary athlete, an outstanding athlete that was in all scholastic and multiple sports, all Eastern, college All-American. But above all that, uh, Mr. Phelan uh, 
embodied a lot of the qualities of leadership that the person that's going to receive this award tonight displayed during his tenure, his four-year tenure at Medford High School. The person is disciplined within each sport, disciplined to the point of self-punishment, team play, but yet it was a type of team play and self-discipline that wasn't displayed by I'm the person. I think it was displayed by his performance game by game, across multiple sports, over multiple years. And as a result of that, the MHS Coaches Association decided that this person, who emulated those qualities of Richard J. Phelan, the athlete, was worthy this year of receiving not only the trophy, but the $300 scholarship that goes with it, and the $300 donated by the Memphis Senior Football Associates. The person that I'm talking about, not only being multi-talented, but being a leader, and when you are a leader and you're elected captain of multiple sports, you've got to believe that his fellow teammates believe that he is the person to go to in time of need. And this was displayed time and time and again during his four years of matriculation in our athletic program at Bedford High School. Played four years golf, captain the golf team, was selected the most valuable player. Four years hockey, captain, hockey team, all-star honors, elected the most valuable player. Three years of varsity baseball. Total of 11 letters during his four years. It gives me great pleasure at this time to introduce the winner of the Richard J. Phelan Award for 1997, Joey Roy. This concludes this evening's uh, presentations. I'd like to thank you for your cooperation. Congratulations to all the student athletes, and a very, very big thank you to all the parents. Thank you very much.